Senator from Missouri. Mr. President, um, I'm, I'm pleased that uh, the Senate's uh, considering a critical bill this week to establish permanent normal trade relations uh, with Russia. I, sh I should have borrowed our friend's sign that said uh, PTC equals jobs, which may very well be uh, an accurate uh, equation, but PNTR also will equal jobs. We can compete. Uh, given the opportunity to compete, and that's what these trade relationships are all about. Uh, this legislation over, overwhelmingly has passed the House. Uh, it's, uh, gonna have, it's going to have strong bipartisan support here in the Senate, and I believe will pass today and needs to pass today. Uh, Russia joined the World Trade Organization in August of 2012. Uh, and since that time, our exporters, U.S. companies, have not been able to take full advantage of the fact that they have this new way to get to the Russian market because we haven't granted permanent, normal trade relationships uh, to Russia. Uh, since all the other major WTO members have already got that, per uh, that permanent relationship, they've had a real advantage uh, since August of last year as they can move forward immediately uh, and compete and make agreements uh, that American companies can't make. We're the only, American companies are the only companies losing market share after Russia joined uh, the, the World Trade Organization. And not because they're not as competitive, because until we do what we need to do here today, uh, they've been working at a real disadvantage. Uh, in addition to securing a level playing field for American companies, uh, we also need to replace uh, the jackson Vanek policy with something that frankly has now more real-world potential and real-world understanding. Russia is clearly not uh, the Russia of Soviet days. Uh, but Mr. President, we still have reasons to be concerned about uh, individual uh, freedom of expression in Russia. Uh, we need to express that concern. That's why I'm, I'm in support of a portion of this bill that Senator Cardin and Senator Kyle uh, have fought for during this whole discussion and now have in this bill, in the House bill, uh, the portion where we look at the uh, terrible treatment and ultimate death of Sergei Magnitsky. Uh, and this provision uh, will ensure that those who are complicit in those activities and in his ill treatment and death uh, don't get a free pass, and it sends messages to other countries that while we want to trade with you, we also want to continue uh, to speak strongly for the rights of individuals, no matter where they are, uh, to speak up against their government. Uh, normalizing tr trade relations with Russia is also an important move to my state, and I assume all our states. I know in Missouri, uh, we exported $86 million to Russia in 2011, uh, and exports are up 6% already uh, from that year uh, since we started 2012. Uh, worldwide, Missouri exports more than $12.3 billion in goods and services, or at least we did in 2010, and almost half of that was exported to countries where we have free trade agreements um, and we need to continue to do that. Nearly 300 Missouri companies supported over 32,000, uh, supported, supported 32,000 jobs that were driven by exports. 32,000 people in Missouri uh, have jobs uh, because of trade, uh, and a lot of that trade, frankly, is uh, in our hemisphere. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I'm concerned on the Russian agreement uh, that Russia has failed to agree to bring its animal health and food safety measures in line with the WTO agreement on the application of uh, sanitary and phytosanitary measures. It's called the SPS agreement. I'm going to continue to monitor this situation and ensure that American agricultural exports and pork would be a really good example of this, uh, don't face market access barriers in Russia. Free trade has to be fair trade. Free trade doesn't work if it's not fair trade. If it's fair trade and free trade, uh, American workers and American companies uh, can and do actively and positively compete 
uh, all over the world. In fact, we have a little bit of a trade imbalance uh, these days, and I, we should be concerned about it, but 57% of it uh, is in uh, energy. If we'd become more energy self-sufficient, we could easily reduce our trade Im imbalance by 50%. Uh, if we just got North American energy as, as our focus for energy, we'd not only be more secure, but we'd also have a better a trade relationship. Uh, this legislation, Mr. President, what we're dealing with today, Russia PNTR, deals, uh, builds on the progress we made last year with the passage of three free trade amendments. Uh, many of us on this side work closely with uh, our friends on the other side and the White House to get these long negotiated deals passed. In the six months since our free trade agreement with, with South Korea took effect, trade between our two countries has increased by over $30 billion. $30 billion increase in six months. As we're trying to figure out how to grow our economy, uh, the export world and free trade is one of the places that we can go, go and have the most uh, a speedy application of what we do to grow our economy. 30 billion in Korea alone. Uh, American exports to Colombia have increased 20% since that free trade agreement took effect. Uh, the ratification of the Panama free trade agreement uh, just went into effect a few weeks ago, but that enables American firms to fully participate in the economic opportunities that will uh, occur with the expansion of the Panama Canal and the continued growth of that uh, economy. Uh, what happens there is critical to us. I, I believe this agreement, which I've said already has passed the House, uh, will pass the Senate today. Um, I, I think there are other things we can and should do. Uh, we need to work with the President, and the President should be working with Republicans and Democrats uh, who are friends of trade to do several things. One would be Trade Promotion Authority. Uh, we used to call this fast track. This is where uh, the administration can negotiate an agreement, and then the House and Senate either vote yes or no on that agreement. It's the only way uh, to get agreements done in the world we live in today. Right now, the administration has no realistic way of passing trade agreements through the Congress. Uh, the President needs to work with Congress so that we'll give him the, th the authority. He needs to ask for it, and he needs to really want it. Uh, so that we can have these agreements. This gives our trading partners the confidence they need to make the concessions that you make in negotiation and know uh, that this is, uh, this, this is, the agreement is gonna be the agreement. It's either gonna be that agreement or no agreement uh, at all. Since the TPA lapsed in 2006, we haven't negotiated a single new free trade agreement since the lapse of TPA in 2006. If that doesn't tell you uh, how important it is that uh, we move back to a way to get these agreements done, I don't know what would. Uh, second, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. These negotiations uh, are, seem to me to be languishing right now and need senior administration attention in order to gather the steam they need. A strong uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership is the most effective way to consolidate our leadership in that part of the world at a time when China is aggressively moving into East Asia. Uh, we also need to look at the Philippines. Senator Inouye and I have a, uh, have a, a, a bill that would strengthen our relationship uh, with the Philippines called the SAVE Act. I'd like to see uh, the administration work with the two of us to see what we could get done to have that relationship that's been so strong and has lasted so long uh, become even closer uh, as we figure out how to trade with that economy in a way that makes them more stable and closer friends to the United States. And frankly, we will benefit uh, as our workforce will benefit from that agreement. There's a transatlantic trade agreement uh, that puts us in a better situation uh, to trade with the European Union. This should be one of the easiest agreements we've ever done because you're, you have two mature economies uh, trying to trade with each other. Uh, the normal negotiations about labor and environment and other things that sometimes take so long in these agreements, uh, frankly, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't take long. Mr. President, you've spent a lot of time 
uh, in, with our NATO partners, and they'd be the same partners that would be our EU trading partners if we'll move forward there. And finally, let me say, we need a fresh trade policy for the Americas. We now have trade agreements with six countries that were part of the Dominican Republic CAFTA uh, agreement, uh, we have Mexico, Canada, Panama, Colombia, Chile, and Peru. Uh, and uh, we have a trade preferences agreement with, with Haiti, but we really need to look uh, to see what we can do uh, to trade in this hemisphere, improve our economic relationship with the South American um, giant country and giant economy of Brazil. Uh, your best trading partners, Ms. President, should be your neighbors. Uh, and certainly Canada and Mexico have proved that. When we send uh, Canada a dollar, they traditionally send us back somewhere in the neighborhood of a dollar. Right now it's about 91 cents. Uh, our, our trade with Mexico, uh, Mexico now sends us back 70, or at least a, a year ago, was, and probably this, this number continues to grow, was sending back 75 cents. That's why on the energy front, when you deal with them, it makes a difference. So they've proven that uh, your neighbors should be your best trading partners. Now Sen I think Senators we need to look- time uh, has expired. Uh, 30 seconds? Without objection. We need to look at, uh, at expanding the economic partnerships to our neighborhood. The, the Western Hemisphere needs more attention. Trade makes sense for America. Trade creates jobs. Trade creates opportunity. I'm glad we're voting on this trade agreement today, and I would uh, yield back.